Grace Tame, you wrote in the Nine newspapers today that the decision of the Prime Minister to have Mr Porter assume the role of acting leader marks a proverbial slap in the face of our entire nation. Why is that? Well, I mean, we just look at the current climate. Since January, when I was named Australian of the Year, there's been a mass disclosure, I suppose. You know, we saw Brittany Higgins bravely come forward um, and countless other men and women sharing stories of, of abuse, which has brought this issue of sexual assault, child sexual abuse, even domestic violence as a, as a sort of a side issue as well. Um, it's brought all of these issues that are they're linked by a common thread of abuse of power to the forefront of an, our national conversation. And our government is clearly not paying attention to that because even in the case of Christian Porter, who is only accused, he's not proven guilty of rape, he's an accused rapist and he's been put in a position of power. That sends a message of skewed priorities where our focus is disproportionately on the rehabilitation or the path to rehabilitation for the image and standing of accused and even in some cases convicted predators over survivor support. And that feeds into the already crippling fear and doubt of bystanders and, and victims who are looking to our leadership for examples of, of morality, for support, for, for belief. Well, under Australia's legal system, everybody's entitled to the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. Um, what would you say to those people who say Mr Porter's not been convicted of, convicted of anything or even charged with anything and that therefore he's entitled to the presumption of innocence and that the government is entitled to put him in a job which practice says he would normally get, even though there is a deputy who is from the National Party? I agree. I, I believe in the presumption of innocence as well. Um, but also the law is the bare minimum standard. One can be a law abiding citizen um, and also hold outmoded views and behave uh, according to those out, outmoded views. Um, furthermore, this isn't just any position. This is a position of public trust. Um, and if I were to personally be, be picking um, somebody for a position such as this or even, say, picking uh, a babysitter for my children, um, if, I was having, if I had the choice between an accused rapist uh, and a whole bunch of other people who were not accused rapists, I would probably pick one of the not accused rapists. So your issue really is with the choice made by the Prime Minister, not with Christian Porter? That's right. This is not about Christian Porter's character. This is about uh, the morality of our current leadership. So your primary argument here really is with the Prime Minister then as the person who must set the standards. That's right. The Prime Minister so, uses his or her discretion to pick ministers for particular roles. And this role in particular, you know, is embedded with the power to stop debate the power to enforce silence, the power to suppress the truth, which is chillingly ironic, I think. Uh, presumably they're not going to change their minds about that now, but you mentioned in your piece that you had a, you'd felt at a meeting last week that the government uh, or that the meeting was productive, but you say the PM's actions in this case shows he's determined to associate his party with outmoded, oppressive cultures and attitudes... What's your assessment now, particularly in the light of this, about how seriously the government is dealing with the cultural issues as well as the practical issues? And what more should the, the Prime Minister in particular be doing right now? Well, yes, it was. It was a productive meeting that I had, but ultimately actions speak louder than words. That's the whole point here. Um, you know, and I, I will continue to act in, act in good faith. Ultimately, I, I, I don't want to be criticising anybody if I don't have to. Um, uh, 
I am a firm believer in reparation um, as a priority. I'm a firm believer in conciliation and putting one's differences aside and working with people that you might not necessarily agree with in order to um, achieve progress. Grace Tame, thanks for your time tonight. Thank you, Laura. 7.30 sought a response from Christian Porter's office, but are yet to hear back. We also invited the Prime Minister to appear on the program tonight, but he declined. A spokesman for the Prime Minister says Minister Porter was chosen due to his previous experience in the role and is entitled to the presumption of innocence and that the government is unequivocally committed to women's safety and the protection of children. You can read the full statement on our website. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.